one thing or two? Woo! For reserve, still two. Two, yeah. Yeah. But we dropped more food. Oh, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Which is Hi, everybody! Talking. Oh, welcome. <laughs> it's another Thirsty Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. With Lisa and Sarah. <laughs> Thirsty Thursday. Yeah. We love it. Hi. I hear talking. Fantastic. Talking. There's people. Yay. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi. How's the, how's the day going? Okay, good. Mm. Good day here. Good day. Fantastic. It's a great day here in Napa Valley. It's a little warm. It's a little warm. It's a lot of warm, actually. <laughs> Sarah and I are starting. I know we're doing Cabernet Franc today. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but we're starting with Sauvignon Blanc because it's cool and refreshing. Yes, and very cool and refreshing. <laughs> but we're only doing that while we wait for some people to log That's in right. and all that good stuff. It's our warm up. Wine. Yeah, it's so, a little over a hundred degrees outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a hundred degrees here in Rutherford. That's what my car set. Yes, but I oh, never the, really believe the car because uh -huh. the car is measuring the pavement, right? It's going to be over a hundred for about ten days, yeah. which is crazy. Ten days? Wait, yes. Wait. About, oh. Okay, I'm supposed to go soil sampling in my truffle orchard. You this gotta week. get up at like I would suggest getting and up around five. That's in the what morning. I said. I was like, I have to go at five in the morning, and that's uh -huh. you know, it's a good hour from my house. Yep. So that's like four in the morning oh, to get there by five. five. <laughs> I think that one of the cool. I don't know if it's going to be tonight, but one of the nights. <laughs> I think the cool is going to be 70 degrees, which right. for us in California and the Napa Valley is like unheard of. It is almost always drops down in the 60s and, and usually 60s, 50s, which is what makes this so fantastic. But it is warm. Right. Wow. Yeah, that's... Poor, poor little grapes. Nice. <laughs> poor little grapes. Well, no, isn't this good? Isn't they going to struggle more, right? Well, they are going to struggle. I went back and checked on my chickens and they were struggling, so I let them out. <laughs> uh, find some cool somewhere cool to play no they're hilarious they I, I like was like trying to lure them under the tree where the shade and cool no they went right to the spot on the outside of the cage where there was maybe like you know a foot of shade next yeah. to where they normally stand in the coop instead of going to the cage they were like, which was 20 feet into the shade 20 feet away they wanted to be like where their spot You're yeah like, that's yeah, their that's... spot it's hilarious it's like you're like... dying over here <laughs> You know, they, they do know. that thing with the mouth open where, like, like a dog because they don't sweat. Panting. The same as, yeah. They're like, funny. Like a dog. So, <laughs> anyway. <Anyways. laughs> I think it's kind of funny. So another reason why we are choosing to drink a little Sauvignon Blanc is almost kind of like a pre-celebratory beverage. Mm -hmm. And why is that? I don't know, Sarah. Why well, is that? <laughs> because harvest <laughs> is coming. We are officially picking grapes and bringing them in on Monday, the 17th. What are so, we bringing in? Sauvignon Blanc. So super excited? Super excited. Super Chin -chin? Yes, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not quite ready, but I will be. But um, you're never ready. That's true. Right. And by that meaning, it's just there's lots and lots of little things to get ready for. and um, Right, because all the equipment has been sitting around doing nothing since last harvest. So you're <laughs> like, oh no, we got to make sure everything's working properly. And everybody goes through this. That's true. Well, we checked the <laughs> equipment after harvest. We put yes. it away. And then a couple months ago, we like start bringing stuff out. And we do our maintenance. And we put that away. And I will tell you, even though we've done all of that, our press wasn't decided not to work. Right. And so we have to go and get a little electrical piece well, to it. It's the same as if like you had a home that wasn't used that often and you go to that home or you were renting a home that wasn't used and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, nothing works because nothing's been used in six months. That's, that's actually a good analogy. Yes. Like taking a little trailer out and we yeah. might need some air in the tires. Well, no, I say that because I was in a rental house this weekend in Lake Tahoe and... <sighs> Same thing, nothing was working because nobody used it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. It was a friends of a friend's place. So, But we're going to get everything yeah. working. Don't you worry. Okay. Our team, our, our facility team, our maintenance team, everybody is working mm -hmm. you know, around the clock, getting ready. Really and exciting. it's like you can feel the excitement. You know, it's, it's a little stressful, but it's good stress. Yes. I believe in good stress, and um, I feel it often. <laughs> right. And, but it's good. It's kind of it's motivating, and it's exciting, and... I'm, I'm ready for, I'm ready for that. You know, we've used, I've heard the word pivot more um, <laughs> in the last few months than maybe any other word that tends to be, that's like the word of the month or the, or the quarter or maybe the year. Uh, but we're ready to pivot <laughs> and shift over from our normal winemaking, bottling, all the other things that we're doing and move into harvest. Yeah. Yeah. So. But you yeah. do that every year. Well, we do. We do. We are Bottling and but, yeah, right. You usually time, have a little break between bottling and yeah, no breaks harvest. this year. No <laughs> breaks. 
It's okay. I'll but take a I break mean, later. Sauvignon Blanc. I feel so since we pick our Sauvignon Blanc when it's a little, you know, like it's not fully ripe yet, and on purpose because we harvest in three stages of ripeness. Mm-hmm. Um, we always kind of like pick it a little early, right? Right. Say so close to like champagne. Sorry, I a little champagne. sparkling wine, wine picking season. Right. We will do a little earlier pick, yes. and then oh, there's a question. Yes. The question was, will you have to do anything different with Harvest because of the pandemic? Oh, we yes. are doing a lot of things different because of the pandemic. Good question. A lot of things. And so we can get into that in a moment. I'm going to circle oh. back really quick and just talk about the Sauvignon should. Blanc. Just picking, you know, we do an earlier pick that's more of the natural acidity, um, more of those uh, citrus notes, and then um, a medium pick, and then a later pick for more of those tropical flavors, which I really like. I mean, I like the tropical um, passion fruit, guayava. Um, notes mm. to it, and so you get some peaches and stuff. So Gua- guava in English. Yeah, guava. Yeah, <laughs> guava in Spanish. Yeah, so I'm sorry. You know, we speak a lot of Spanish around here. You know, and my mom happens to be from Mexico, right. so you, know, you can't tell because I have all these freckles, but it's true. Um, so Sauvignon Blanc. So picking a couple picks, right. um, but the heat like it makes me a little nervous because they're going to get hot out there, mm-hmm. and basically when it gets this hot, the grapes instead of like pushing forward actually shut down and they stop maturing. They might dehydrate because it's so hot. So we're ensuring that we've got just the right enough water out there, but not too much. Um, they're going to be fine. It, it'll be fine. And, and so we always go through something like that. But yeah, so yay Sauvignon Blanc yeah, and yeah. yay Harvest is officially happening. The second question um, that we just had was regarding what we're doing differently. And we are Because of the to, pandemic. Because of the pandemic yeah. and COVID, we are, um, my winemaking team, um, I've got, you know, we've got interns, we've got people coming in, and I'm basically creating different pods, you know, like bubbles, pods, teams, whatever you want to call them, and we will not be cross-pollinating with each other. Um, I have three of them. We have one down at Calmere. Makes me want to cry a little bit. One here, super (laughs) early. You said we're going to start, like, you know, as early as four in the morning. We've got early morning shift, and that's going to be great for Siebel. So I basically have moved um, how we make wine into kind of like spread it out so i have a late night shift into like possibly early morning and then an early early morning into early afternoon and with that said so what i realized is the grapes really don't know what time of day it is right we know that we pick at night so that's something that we can't change for a lot of the pump overs and additions and things that we do we really can separate um, we've never done it this way before but if you stop and you think you know think outside the box it is very doable it's going to be doable we will make it happen um it's uh, going to be interesting. So maybe slow and slow and steady. Right. Um, and you've talked to a lot of your other winemaker friends. Lots and lots. And yeah, this is what everyone's deciding to do. Smart. And we've learned a lot with. from people that, so we've the, the Aussies and the Kiwis and the Sappers and the people uh, who have gone through harvest in the spring because they're on the other side of yeah, the equator. Right. Chile. And so a lot of winemakers have gone through and we've talked with them. Right. Basically, they've shared their learnings and um, what's worked, what hasn't worked. Um, Lucky for us, we at least have been had the ability to plan, and they haven't had. They didn't have right. the fun. Really they went plan. right Grape into was, it. Like they were in the middle. They had big fires, and then all of a sudden, right, the fires. Had, I forgot. Yeah, so that they was were like horrible. big, huge, terrible fires, and then the pandemic right after that. And so, well, in world, Australia, not yeah. in like no, so New that was Zealand. in Australia. Yes, yeah. correct. Thank you for <laughs> clarifying that. Not everywhere, but there. Um, but we were talking to a lot of people from Australia as well. So, right, we have at least. Um, the ability to plan in our favor, and we are very thankful that they've shared what their knowledge with us. And so, um, because of that, we are much Thank more you, prepared. Everyone yes. out there, if you, yes. <laughs> um, I don't know that we're still we're still going to have our own learnings. Um, of course. Yeah, but it's being you know it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. But you know this will be. My I'm going to miss the bonding of harvest. Well, That's we're still like... going to figure out ways to bond. So we've yes. done we've been very familiar with um, you know these these kind of tastings, and we're doing this internally with. Um, our teams, Microsoft Teams, and so not to put a plug out there, just what happens to be what we use. Um, and we're practicing, and we've been practicing on how to do this um, already. And we haven't quite gone into the really strict pods, but we will be doing it soon um, because I can't really lose sense of taste and smell. That would right. be terrible. So we're going to be very, very strict. And Lisa's going to be part of my pod, but we're very, I mean, like, it's going to be very tight and like, really tight. Like, we are not going to cross-contaminate with other departments either. I have to be because we're always hanging out anyway, so I yes. just have to be part of your pod at right. this point. <laughs> that's right. So, um, if you come to work, you whatever. Even if you didn't what, want me to. That's right. <laughs> well, I want you. I want you there. Um, so, know, it'll be, funny. yeah, it'll be interesting. And it, it'll be exciting, but you know what? The fruit still, I mean, the, the fruit looks amazing. And mm. for once, it's not a ginormous 
harvest. The last few harvests have been really big. Last year was bigger than we expected it to be, and 2018 was ginormous. And so this is a more normal harvest. Um, less Which is good. Does that mean we finish sooner usually, or just less? Well, yeah, no, it'll less be... pump overs, maybe not really. Yeah, it'll. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to come up with something. <laughs> I, I will have at least some tank space. That to me, like that's been it. So it's you know it'll be better. In that you sense. know what's funny? Uh, so the last time I worked a full harvest uh -huh. with you was in 20, 2010. Right. And then before that, and then I, in 2011, I helped most of 2011. And both of those years were quite cold in Napa. And right. then, so that's, we're talking like 10 years ago. And now so I'm going to need a refresher for certain things. But what's amazing to me is that, like, I'm coming back in on like kind of like a weird year. Another weird year. Another Loving weird was a year. year. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're all so, kind of weird. I, I mean, know, in their own uh, ways. I mean, but I've just, been doing it, but for, like extra weird. That's like true. I mean, 2011 was the coldest year in Napa Valley in like, like 30 something years. Like people didn't even know what to do. Anyways, we do have a question. <laughs> what made the last two harvests so big? Oh, okay, good question. Well, um, there was a lot of factors, but so let's see. So 2018 was a really an you know, unusually large year, and it happened to be one of the. I would say one of the biggest things was that we were. Um, finally, and not in a technically, I mean, I think California is always in a drought year, but in, it, we, we truly were in a year that was not considered, we actually had water. And we had had water even like the years previous. So that's like one of the bigger factors. Um, you have to understand, well, you don't have to, but I'll just try to share, <laughs> that um, the grape, the season is more, has something to do with like that, spe spe that specific year, but it really does happen more of like the year and one to two years prior to that is really the, you know, that weather and that all the stuff is happening um, is really what helps play into like that crop load. So it's a couple of years later and how people prune, and, but the water really certainly helps. Well, too. no, so, all so of those I learned factors. from an arborist that a tree or a plant doesn't actually show any sign for two years. So yeah. if it's distressed, it's from two years prior, but you don't see it for two years. Oh, so same with the grapes. Yeah. I, I thought that was super interesting. That is interesting. I could yeah. It. Yes. And building on that, um, the question was, how old are our vines? Okay. So we have vines Ooh, as so um, old as, um, Loa, let's see, I'm trying to think of right now. <laughs> we've, we've done a lot of replanting, so I have to go back in my Recently. head. And probably like the oldest ones would be 1996. Mm -hmm. um, and we've just recently, let's see, our newest plantings currently would be 2000 and, oh, isn't it HB Vineyard? Yeah, it's older than that. that. Uh, it's not 1996. I think it is. Oh, oh I think the one because Hope Valley or something. Like, yeah, I think, I think that's. I, I think like that's that was our, before. I think this is 98. Oh, yeah. I see, but um, I have to go look you know, that up. Yeah, I might have. It's such a good like, question. We have to go look it up. <laughs> yeah, based on the information that was provided to me <laughs> at the time, because I wasn't here that long ago. Yeah. I mean, not that long ago. So, um, yeah, and then the most recent plantings would be 1990. I mean, 19, 2016. Okay. And then you yes. know, we're getting ready to do some new plantings as well. Right. So, so sorts of stuff. Ooh, another Good, question. question. Yes. So Pete got the email on our 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon release. Fantastic. Um, and is wondering, since it is a lower production, what happens with some of the other grapes? Do you ever sell them to lower quality winemakers? Do you just let them do their thing in the vineyard? What in 2017, we did sell some fruit. Um, and we don't tend to we don't tend to sell that much fruit. You know, it's really depending on our direction. But I would say more often than not, because we're a state, you know, I typically make almost almost all the fruit that we need. Um, I have a little extra petite verdot. I want to keep it. We uh, we have. I basically I don't want to. Does that mean we're gonna do 100 percent petite verdot? Well, I would like to. Well, 2020. I, I know. I, I mean, I, I would, would like. I would to. be so into that. Well, so I actually you should have be in some, some of those meetings. Yeah, Lisa. <laughs> I don't know, Orin, if you're listening, <laughs> because it's one of those things. It's like, oh, we, you know, we try to focus. We try. You like watch this. We try to focus, and you know, sometimes well, the we've pendulum. Done a, we've done a few years with 100 percent petite. Yeah, well, and I 2013, do 14. I think 15. I do a wine club wine yeah. that does a 100 percent, but I like making a petite for dough that's like one little vineyard designate. Are you kidding? I had a 2002, and I know that's before your time, mm -hmm. but. Um, I was like blown away at how well it held up. Oh, when it would. Yeah. So you want to hang on to something for a long time? We even had to decant it. It was a 2002, and I was like, wow, this yes. is still huge and giant. So we're really here mm -hmm. to talk about, I mean, it's the last bottle. It was in my personal stash. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes. We have a question. question. from the audience. Oh. Is it okay to start drinking? No. Yes. Oh, oh sorry. Please. Oh, we, we yes. you guys have already. Oh, We're talking shoot. too much because. Well, we're well, excited about harvest. We're very and, excited. You know. 
And we did have, we snuck in a glass of Sauvignon Blanc. So. And when harvest starts, it'll be funny because if, if we end up keep doing this through harvest, you'll see us looking more tired and more tired. Oh, that's true. And I'm all like, I'm all, yeah. This, Black this is, I'll, be, I'll be in pigtails. I'll be wearing pigtails and boots and I'll probably be dirty and dusty. And that's just, that's more normal than, you know. Yeah. Anyway, some great skin on my jeans. That's exactly. <laughs> Nails don't look pretty. Nothing looks pretty. It's fine. Um, so we are here to talk about reserve wines in general. Although this year we'll general. be using gloves because, you know, we're going to be more careful. Correct. So well, I actually, make... we wear gloves all the time. All the, the time. one interesting but... thing, okay, we'll, we will talk about the reserve. For the wine, the interesting thing, <laughs> it is our 2015 Cabernet Franc. I just wanted to verify. Reserve. That reserve, yes. Thank which you. I also love. I know. Um, but in production, one of the things is like we're learning, everybody's learning how to sanitize and be careful and do all yeah, these things. Less. But we do it all the time. Like we sanitize everything all the well, time. It's very much all the time. We wear gloves. We do, I mean, we weren't wearing wine masks. Wine making, but the number one thing about wine making is cleaning. I right. couldn't believe how much cleaning happens. We all do. you do all day long. You stop cleaning your house when you go home because you're like, I've just been cleaning all day. <laughs> it is very true. So we are very, very good at sanitizing. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, if anybody needs to know, the tricks, well, you know, tricks of the trade. I'm like, we know, we know how to do it, so we're good. So anyway, yeah. Well, so, so cheers to that. Cheers. So yeah, I hope everybody's. Oh, are we doing the bottoms now? I don't know. I was just, I might just okay. was mix, just mixing checking. it up. You know, just checking. Wow. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wow. So reserve, reserve Cabernet Franc. Yes. So oh. um, if you've watched with us before, you might have heard that Sarah and I talk often about how Cabernet Franc is. Mm. One of our favorites that we yes. make and grow here. And we make two Cabernet Francs. We make our Cabernet Franc Napa Valley, which is predominantly Pope Valley fruit, which is our Persephone Vineyard, and um, has a little bit of that Calstoga in there. And this is what, mostly Rutherford fruit? Primarily. That's primarily. a little mix of, yeah. You know, you add a little bit, in. other stuff in there. But yeah, so primarily, has historically been primarily Rutherford, right. but not always. Um, I will say that we actually make, we also do a stained glass series. We do a Cabernet Franc in that one as well. And there are times where I had the petit trois. Um, I've done <laughs> so. I make sometimes more than just two. I will sometimes. Well, Cabernet Franc is such a great blending grape. But we have so we have six different vineyard properties, and we have Cabernet Franc grown in four of them. And we have a little over ten acres in total, which actually makes a fair amount of Cab Franc. And we have some different clones and different rootstocks, and so they all have different flavor components. And so one of the things that I find interesting, and like I, as I get closer. One of the things I find interesting about, um, we talk about reserve and, and what does that mean exactly? And so for me, because this is what, I mean, like, so, you know, it's the best of the best. It is the best out of all the vineyards. It is the best Cabernet Franc that we have. It'll be our best blocks. It'll be our best barrels. It'll be, I have more touch points on Cab Franc just in general. But across the board, the Cab, the reserve will get more, when I say touch points, we go through more passes in the vineyard. I will, I, 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 I shared this before, I'm not sure, but, um, Mr. Piju, I remember <laughs> distinctly the first time I, when I first started and it was in 2006, I was super excited and it was like going out to the vineyard and it's like, oh, you want me to make reserves out of this? I'm getting to know the vineyard and I had them drop fruit, but not just a little bit of fruit, a lot of fruit. I mean, I, I know we dropped tons of fruit because it was, I wanted to ensure that the fruit was going to get ripe and you can't farm it like Cab Cabernet Sauvignon. It's a, it's a different varietal. And so... I remember driving with your dad, and you know we were at the Persephone, and I think I almost like gave him a little heart attack. Sorry, Tony, but um, but it was like for me is if you wanted to make a super high quality, you know, wine, you need to go through and do these things. And so I think he was kind of like wondering why he hired me, why I was like ruining, probably ruining, I was ruining the business. It was like right I was gonna put him in bankruptcy. I was gonna do something. Um, but hopefully he is uh, appreciates the flavor profile that we've been able to like get to because we he do all the different much. stuff um you have to understand my dad tony he made the wine since we started in 1983 so he made the wine yeah. so like giving over the reins to sarah was like a big deal it for was him hard. yeah you, you know, know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have a question, yeah. question. Yeah. this is a fun question from nancy do you have a tasting panel um that goes through and weighs in on what wine should be reserved or is that solely up to sarah as the winemaker that's a good question. <laughs> You're like, how do you answer that? Well, I like to say, I call it family blending seminar. Okay. <laughs> so, it's, it, wait, can I, I have to say this. <laughs> you can say whatever, you can say so whatever. Sarah, I'm Sarah, just drink. <laughs> 
Sarah comes up with, like, her favorite blend. So she kind of, like, picks what goes into the reserve, what goes into our Napa Valley tier. And um, then she brings it to the family. And we all sit down and we have an actual tasting. And she... She is, she's so professional. She puts out the tasting mats and, like, with the thing. She gives notes. She's like, I want to know all your notes. And we go through the tasting. And I laugh because you do all this work, <laughs> like, trying to make it all perfect. And then we come in and we're like, everyone's tasting. And I laugh because we all have such distinctive tasting styles. You know, there's, like, me. And I sit there and I, like, obsessively smell it and taste but it. you're really good at and, it. So. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm mirroring her. Okay. So, <laughs> But, and then I laugh because then, like, my mom will come in and she'll be like, I, looking because my mom is actually on the other side of the camera right now. <laughs> she just <laughs> my, walked in. I know, yeah. she just walked in. And so um, she'll come in and she can spot the flaw. She's like, there's something wrong with this wine. I don't really know what it is, but I know there's something wrong. Like, wait a minute, stop. There's no flaws. No, there is wait no minute, flaws. Like, wait, but in no her flaws. mind, there is. Okay. Like, you know, like. Maybe it's too oaky or maybe right. it's bad, a little That's... too. My, the acidity is not quite yes. right. Okay. It's not a flaw, I, but It's okay. not a flaw, I know, but, but it's not her words, yeah. so I'm just copying her words. And then my dad comes in, he's like, no, it needs this, it needs that, and he tastes in like five seconds, like he doesn't even like really taste. I'm, I'm always kind of like, did you actually taste the wine? <laughs> he always wants more finish and yes. more mouthfeel. And uh, it just cracks me up. And I think my job is to explain, because it's always training, right? And then I always ask you a lot of questions. No, that's My good. dad leaves, because I'm asking too oh. many questions. It's a, yeah, so at the end of the day, it's about I think it's explaining, funny. They yeah. like going, that wine that you're tasting right now that hasn't been bottled, that hasn't had any of its like, you know, the frosting or all the little like the right. love put in there, um, it's going to get a bottle and then like a reserve is going to spend, you know, it, it spends, you know, already spends more time in barrel, a whole additional year at least. And then it goes into a bottle and then it has, and then it spends an additional year, you know, at least in bottle. So you have to like, in my world, you have to know what it's going to taste like in a year or two, and you have to have this foresight. And Which is amazing that you could do that. Like, I wish I could do that. Well, and we can, we'll work on like, it. We're working on it. Like, work, I'm working on it. But it's hard. So I guess at the end of the day, I'm like, I get to choose only because I have over, this is my 29th year of making wine, 29th harvest is coming up, and you develop the ability to know what something's going to taste like long term. And I, and I could attribute that to... Um, if you make a stew or chili or something, if you like to cook and you know all the raw ingredients, right? And you taste it and you put it all together. And if you taste it like right when you just all just put everything together, you're like, mm, that's not very good. That doesn't taste good. It's missing all these parts. But you know, because you've done it a minute, you know, lots of times that if you cooked it and you let it simmer, that it's going to taste better in a few hours. It's going to probably taste better the next day. And so winemaking is that same way. Yeah. And so it's a matter of doing that. Yes. That's another Pete's question. Pete's volunteering to be on the tasting panel. All right, all right, oh, okay. all right. Some other I'm opinion. A pretty, I'm a pretty selfish taster. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm controlling, but the family gets it. But it's, but it's fun, and no, it's good. No, but, you know, that's, I think, why my dad, because, like, in the beginning, so my dad, he was like, he made the wine, and he's very controlling as well. And so, you know, <laughs> yeah. it was really hard to let go, but when he felt comfortable with you, he was very much more... Like, like here. okay, you do. <laughs> it was really it's cool, and fun. it was a, that was a big moment. All of us, like all of us ladies, my mom, my sister Ariana, and I were all kind of like, "What did that just happen?" No, that's true. <laughs> Tony it's just good. released the reins. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. Because I, I used to go and make make blends. Now I just mm -hmm. come up with the one, right. and I'd be like, <laughs> "Tell me what you think. Hopefully, it's good." But the proof is in the pudding, I think, and as long as someone likes it, and it seems like right. some people do. So, so yeah, what does is, what is everybody who's drinking the Cabernet Franc think? I mean, I'm a big fan of our fr Cabernet Franc, and I like Cabernet Francs from, like, Chinon area. Yes. And we're getting some thumbs up, oh, which yay. I love seeing. And um, But, you know, most of the time, Cabernet Franc has that very kind of what I like to call green flavor, uh -huh. you know, and what do they call it, pyrazine? The Paris yeah. had one of the, and that's a natural component that's in Cabernet Sauvignon as well, and mm -hmm. it can be the green characters. Um, with Cab Franc. Wait, so, just, what's in a green character? Like, what classifies that? Because oh, ours like, doesn't have that. No, because I don't like to, it. Yeah, so right. Say, I don't like it. So, um, it tends to be more of like the flavor of like a green bell pepper, like that, that herbaceous mm -hmm. character. Um, I think of it more of as green herbs as opposed to, I try to push this into more of a savory herb, and it's intentional. So, that's why I drop so much fruit. Um, I want to make sure that the grapes can ripen in time. So Cab Franc will be the last thing that comes in almost always. 
and I was just in the vineyard. Well, I've been in the vineyard almost every day. Well, I have been in the vineyard the last every day. But the Cab Franc looks like Sauvignon Blanc right now, where Cabernet Sauvignon, for instance, is already it's already gone through Verasion, or it's pretty. It's like ninety eight percent through Verasion. It has its color, and Cab Franc is just like it's still green. It's not green everywhere, but in some blocks, where we still have a lot of green, and so it's you know so it's going to come in a little bit later. And so if we don't balance it. Um, and we don't, you know, we have to leave a, a certain amount of fruit on there, but then we have to drop some fruit and balance it out. And that's why this does not taste green right. and herbaceous. I mean, it's got an herbaceous And character. you let it ripen so long, right? You let it hang on the vine. What's well, like, the last? It's because it's a late the ripening. It's you, the you're late making ripen. it even after Cabernet Sauvignon. Well, I do. It's the last yeah. thing that comes in. Which is unusual because most people don't do that. Most people pick it before. Well, because a lot of people do. I mean, like, I don't know a lot of people, but like, No, no, I, I, maybe... Nap is different, but in other areas of the world, but I know that they it's would not pick Cabernet. it before. Yeah, yeah, it's they would just pick it not, before Cabernet Sauvignon. It's not Cabernet Sauvignon. Right, it's Cab Franc, though, and it's delicious. Yeah, we I think. Pressure. Yes. What does the barrel time look like on this? Is okay. Some of the barrels that you use? So it's um, I do about eighty-five percent new oak, a um, hundred of which is French, and it spends about twenty-six months on oak. And so you know, bring it in and then put it away, and it sits in the barrel. Um. For all the wines, not just but all of them, I pick it, it goes to barrel, and I let it sit in barrel for the life of its wine. I like to be able to go in, I always put something down into neutral oak, and then whatever percentage down into new oak. So if I know a certain vineyard block is going to be amazing, um, and it's going into the reserve program, that's where it's going to get its 85% new oak, which is French, and then that little 15% is in neutral oak, which is not imparting any oak characteristics. And what I like to be able to do is go through and taste all the different um, all the different vineyard blocks that have Cabernet Franc or any other varietal so I can taste what that vineyard block tastes like without the oak influence. To me that's right. really important because I need to be able to know. How do you know? I mean you could, oak can mask and make things pretty and it's your baking, it's your you know spice cabinet if you will and it's nice to be able to go in and yeah. you know, mix it up and but good oak and good winemaking practices and lots of touch points and hand it's all hand harvested and picked and done. Wow, I don't know. I'm like, <laughs> it feels like I'm like I'm like I'm off. It's just me. I mean, I do. I love. So I, we, so I think we both have a love affair with Cap Franc. That's totally why do. it's one of those. Um, okay, but is this mostly? I don't know if you remember because you know you make a lot of wines, uh -huh. and this was 2015. Do you remember if this how much Cabernet Franc? Because I know sometimes you add a little bit, maybe a little Cab. So, in okay, there. but seven like percent. I think it's seven percent Cabernet Sauvignon in it. So. Um, yeah, so okay. it's 93, right. 93 Some percent. years, like, it's I do the math. Oh, I'm like, oh, someone's, I, I did it all. I swear I didn't look. And then you go, so, yay. Kind of right. <laughs> I Thanks think, for that. I mean, we I have, know. you know, people behind so like, try to. I remember, I, this is my favorite story to tell about our Cabernet Franc. I, every time, I, I, I went to this one um, restaurant once, and this guy in there got really upset. It was um, our Napa Valley Cabernet Franc, which we sell only to restaurants in select states around the country. Mm -hmm. We have like five yeah. states. And I laughed because he kept going, why is there 1% Cabernet Sauvignon in there? It was 99% Cab Franc, 99 Cab Sauv. And I mean, 1% Cab Sauv. Uh, <laughs> out my brain. I know. And I was just like, he, oh, he, he was me. getting like mad. And I called, yes, he remember. Right? I know, it was like five years ago. And you just don't remember. I, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to call Sarah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and she looked, she just started laughing. And she goes, Lisa, you know the answer to this. <laughs> I didn't have enough Cabernet Franc, so I had to top the barrels of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. I thought I would have told you because I can. No, but like, <laughs> no, no, uh, that's no but I would have been like, I mean, yeah. So, you know, that you like literally too. scolded me. No. In a well, nice way, in a very nice way. Because you had just worked harvest. I know, I had. <laughs> that's why it was funny. Yeah. We have another question. Okay. We like I just questions. needed him to get off my back. Oh, so I understand. So if the 85% new oak, do you blend all of the barrels, including the other 15% neutral, into the same vintage, or is yes. that separate? So, no, so th so this bottle will have 85% um, new oak, and it, it will get, so it'll take all the different components to it, and because it has the 15% neutral of the um, lots that I want, and now here's the thing, I will put some, you know, block, let me just back up a little bit, all of, we have different vineyard blocks of Cabernet Franc, and when they come in, um, ferment as them, well as, all the or different, different vineyards around the valley of which gives you right. of Cabernet Franc. Right. And then the, like those different right. vineyard blocks within those vineyards. Right. Everything that comes in, I bring it in and I keep it separate. And everything will go down to some percentage of either um, neutral oak and new oak. Even the barrel experiment, which actually I bottle as 100% new oak, 
but I also have a little bit of it that's a neutral oak because I always want to be able to taste that vineyard, those mm-hmm. vineyard blocks. But it takes but a lot said, of coordinating. It does. So there's a lot <laughs> like of a lot cellar. goes on. <laughs> this isn't easy. It's fun. It's, you know, it's, it's good. It's like a big puzzle. Um, uh-huh. So all of it. So I'll go through and choose the best lot. So I might not always choose um, every new oak and old oak or neutral oak component, you know, put, to put it together in the blend. I might choose these two new oak, a little bit of the neutral oak over here, because it is still part of the blend. In general, most of the time, the blocks that are together, that were, you know, once one that got split will go together, but not always. You know, I get to mix it up a little bit. But that is, so there is neutral oak in this and new oak. And, uh, right, and you know that based on your the notes that get compiled. Yeah, and I start putting I start yeah. putting blends together in my head during harvest. So that's like kind of like, and I have several hundred lots to work with in the very beginning. We've got lots of different vineyard blocks and sub blocks, and then you bring them in and I split them. And in my mind, I'm already kind of putting together from the beginning. Like when I'm out there tasting, um, all picking decisions are done by taste, not by a number. So. Um, all of that stuff gets separate, and so then it's cool. like you start off with this, and then I start working my way down, and eventually it gets put in a box. Right. So, yeah. All right, what's another question? question? A really great question as you're going into harvest. <laughs> <laughs> as well, how do you distribute your time across the wines? Because you do make a, a number of different varietal and offerings. Yeah, so um, distribute my time. I basically live and breathe wine for a good <laughs> solid four months um there's distribute there's no time the time is just there um luckily well it's so, because we do white wine and that's red wine. yeah so it's like, and sparkling and which sp- is the first yeah so it's and we're um, doing the last which is cab franc so a little bit of everything yeah, yeah i have i'm sometimes jealous of my friends that either do like focus on one or the other but <laughs> not that jealous um because because that what lisa was alluding to is really truly is that our fruit all the fruit comes in, not all the varietals, thankfully, come in at the same time. So, you know, we'll start off with Sauvignon Blanc, then Chardonnay is like right behind it, you know, and then, you know, like Pinot's usually right before that, and then it's Merlot, and then it kind of just moves up. San, San Giovese likes to come in, then Malbec, <laughs> and then we, we and then we kind of go through, and at the very right. end is like Cab and then Cab Franc. And because everything's you know, relatively, it's dependent on like the different vineyards also, but. Except for 2010 and 11, where it all came in in like October. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> That was fun. Because uh, <laughs> it was a, a colder except for, year. Except for the Sauvignon Blanc. Except for the Sauvignon Blanc. Like, like, right. So it's, but it's that's really because dependent. it was a colder year, so everything took a lot longer to ripen. And thank goodness. Well, so 2010, yeah. what you're saying is that was that was a light year, and yeah. we were down by 30% of all the, I mean, the fruit. So we, I remember. So it was like all the stuff could come in in October. Although, because, but it tastes amazing. I opened a reserve oh no. Cabernet Sauvignon from that um, at the beginning of the summer, and it was Well, super concentrated awesome. because we lost so much fruit, so that yeah. like, so all that energy went into the tiny, all the, just the fruit that was there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, sometimes, you know, Mother Nature does something that we're like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's terrible, but it can also, like, be a positive. So, right. you know, it's, it all makes it always interesting and good. Plus, if you're able to hold on to it that long, I actually don't hold on to my wines that long, but I think I just forgot it was in there. <laughs> I, that happens yeah. sometimes, too. I like, oh, I should it. drink this now. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could hang on to it. I actually need to, like... No, it just gets lost to... because I don't have like a big place to display my wines. I don't have like a fancy wine cellar, so I just have it's a like trainer. buried in the little fridge. Yeah. Well, but, but, but it's not probably little fridge, but you do like yeah, it's a little fridge. Okay. I have two well, little fridges. You need that, like maybe you got to. I'm building someone. a wine cellar in September. Yeah, I want. I want to know about that because mm-hmm. that sounds exciting. I want to build one too. I know. Yeah, I have a guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who's that? Not a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> the important. <Yeah. laughs> um. So. Yeah. So, well, I got well, <laughs> someone was like, funny. I'm like, any other questions? <laughs> any, yeah, yeah, any more questions? Well, I'm, are we running out of time? I feel like we get the look sometimes of like, yeah. I feel Stop like talking. we could talk and do this longer. I could do I this feel easily like, for an hour, maybe two. Yeah. It's the a, more I drink, the more I talk. I mean, and we're both talkers. What It goes by and we sing, oh my gosh, what are we going to, how are we going to make, talk about something for like this long and apparently we are more it's than not, capable. Yeah, it's not a problem. Because I still feel like I have a lot to say and I feel like I'm getting the gotta wrap stuff up well i should say i i do know that people are starting to travel more here at napa which is really great i mean we are so we are open here at peju by reservation mm-hmm. um if you want to go to calmer we're open there on friday saturdays and sundays only and really cool thing we started here so we're now doing what we're calling the peju picnic oh yeah where the- you come in and have some snacks mm-hmm. And we have a four wine flight thing, and somebody will walk you through it, what you're tasting with your snacks. Well, I think it's more than snacks, isn't it? No, that's the picnic. And then okay, we're doing um, okay. what we're calling vine 
Oh, wait, I have to go cheat. Oh, I remember the name of it. There's a good wine and dine amongst the vines oh, okay. for Kalia, cool. which is a great name. Mm-hmm. And I've uh, done that personally, by the way. And I invited some friends, and it was fabulous. Yeah, it's really fabulous. So good. And it's then, so good. yeah, and you're going to get a full four courses, but you're still being, everything is perfectly paired. So it's a, it's a wine and food pairing. And our chef is amazing. Yeah, I'm like I'm like, I I'm like mm. and so the picnic is only available. I do have to cheat for that because I have it somewhere. Oh my God. Um, the picnic is only available on Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays because it's not as crazy busy on those okay, days. Yeah. Saturday, That's actually Saturday, nice. To, those are the best days right. to come. Those are the best days. Yeah, and then on, <laughs> and then the vine, the wine and dine amongst the vines, which is more the bigger, the bigger meal. That is Wednesday through oh. Sunday. Oh, you need a forty-eight hour reservation. Yes. we're being told. So mm. yes, very important yeah. stuff. And One last fun question. Oh, yeah. I love okay. questions. Have you ever raided the Peiju Winery for fun with friends when you were younger? Wait, have I ever raided? Ra- like, have you come in? Oh, my God. Yeah, of course. Well, and younger? <laughs> <laughs> of course we did. Yeah, it's amazing. We had the alarm code. Well, I mean, for the first 10 years, we were in, you know, in our garage. So we were just always in there. So that, but that wasn't a big deal. But yeah, in high school age, we were here at the winery. Tell property. me you haven't done it recently. You haven't come after hours and tasted. No, like, I know. Not is at all. that boring? Kind of. It's kind of boring. I know. Kind of. I'm never here. I'm always traveling. <laughs> but yeah. But no, yeah, we used to like do it a lot like because people. No, That's what's right one across of those the like... street. No, right across the street, the boys. You just, there was a like, two boys that lived across the street, and mind you. We're, it's a big property. We're on 30 acres here yeah. in Rutherford, and they also on 30 acres across the street. So, like, we would have, like, I'd have a sleepover, and then all the girls would run, and we had, like, oh, flashlights, and we'd, like, flash at their house, and then they'd come running over. Which one was the last yeah. one? Yeah. Marcellus? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I'm not going to name names right now. And, yeah, and we used to, like, take out the three-wheeler, because at that time we had a three-wheeler, not a four-wheeler. Three-wheeler, and my dad caught us one time. He found us. Like, I mean, oh, we were a no. good two miles out somewhere in the vineyards. We could hear and you. he found us. And the boys took off running. <laughs> and, like, and my sister and I sat there and were like, oh, wait, no, that wasn't with my sister on that one. That was just a friend. Because <laughs> <laughs> my sister and I got into trouble, too. And she's going to be like, no, I didn't. I know. She's going to act all proper. like, no. And, um, she, yeah, it was great. And we just stood there and we're like, yeah, we were just thought it'd be fun to go out at two o'clock in the morning into the middle of the vineyard. Stargazing. Yeah, and my dad's Which, like, uh huh. <laughs> Time to go home. <laughs> oh, yeah, check yeah. on the cross. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Looking at the meteors. So, yes, and then of course we we had the alarm code, so we would come in here and. But I never really felt the need to get. I know this will also be kind of boring. Adriana and I, that's my sister, she and I were always allowed to have wine growing up with meals, mm-hmm. so we didn't ever feel the need to go get, like, wasted at the house. It was not... I, I actually way. didn't get, like, completely wasted until I went to college and drank other things. Yeah. <laughs> so, I I know. Yeah. No, but that's... I think that's so. normal. I think that's... If you... Is that normal? I, I, well, don't I don't know. I think if well, you... Well, and I was also very afraid kids. because, you know, growing up here in the Valley... Um, I went to school in St. Helena, and it's a very small town, and you couldn't have a party. I mean, at 9 o'clock, the cops would be at your door, shutting you down, and then... It's true. So all the kids would go up into the hills, and every year I was in high school, I mean, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior year of high school, that's four years, I I knew somebody that died from drunk driving coming down the mountain. So, like, I was really... And my sister, too. We were always, like, really conscientious of that, because I'm like, why would I be stupid? I can drink at home. (laughs) So... Yeah, not to end up right. Yeah, yeah, no, like, uh, <laughs> yes, but don't drink and drive. Moral of the story. <laughs> yeah, and then make sure that your children can, you know, yeah, just, just be at least smart. Taste. Don't be stupid. At least we're not stupid. I was allowed to drink at home. Yeah, as long yeah. as I stayed home, I'm like, I was allowed to have whatever I wanted. And right, so, like that. It, it never yeah, felt but I like I needed to get wasted at home. Again, I, that didn't happen until college. Yeah, I never. Yeah, so I don't think I was given the rule not to. I just didn't because I didn't really like. It takes all the fun <laughs> out of it when you right. can't sneak it. You know, it's one of those. Right, anyway. right, right. Thankfully. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so, yeah, on a so, positive note, drinking wine is amazing. Yeah, drinking wine's amazing. Uh, Harvest is amazing. <laughs> we hope that... Um, Drink more Cab Franc because more people need to know how good it is. What's delicious. So share it with your friends. It's delicious. And hopefully, and, and thank you guys for like, coming and listening yeah. and joining can't, us. We can't really, 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 really appreciate week. it. Next week, we're drinking, um, I believe, our Calmer wines, a couple of our Calmer mm-hmm. wines. So you can try... Our next group. We're going to be down in Camaro, aren't we? I hope so. Yeah, we are. Gonna I don't be think down we there. talked about that. Or if, if we're harvesting down there, then we'll be down there. I'm guessing yeah, we'll have to because so, you'll miss me. Should be fun. <laughs> I know. You so, anyways, not, but... um, cheers. Yeah, cheers, cheers to y'all. See you guys. next week, Thursday, cheers. 4 o'clock. Cheers.
Yay. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs>